Hey, hey, here is a really simple tutorial on how to code collision for Pico 8. This is something that I've struggled with quite a bit since starting Pico and I finally kind of came up with more of a simple way to do it. And uh, full disclosure, this is heavily based just about, just about completely stolen from this guy right here scathe from the pico 8 forum he writes a simple collision function i've downloaded this and used this quite a bit and so this tutorial is based on this code a lot of it is completely the same some of it i've changed to be a little bit more beginner friendly but it's very very simple and a really great way to do it so big props to this guy play his cartridge and it's just a sprite that has really nice collision all around and it's just just very well done. So I really appreciate it when people make simple, easy things. So you can download this project from that forum. Again, it's just called Simple Collision Function on the Pico 8 forum, and he kind of explains it. Very, very nice. Full credit to this guy. So I wanna just kind of explain how this works. This works for any kind of game. And man, it's just a very, very easy way to get collision going. So there's no built-in collision function for Pico 8. You have to write your own. And here's kind of the big idea of how it works. Uh, here's my main game loop. This is just init, update, and draw. And I've broken out my player controls into an init function, a update function, and a draw function for my player. I also have clear screen and draw map here. In the second tab, I have all of my player stuff, which is just initiates the player. This just makes a player table with an X and a Y. And in the update function, we have a function called move and we're passing the player into the move. And then we draw the sprite here in D player. So this is all pretty simple stuff, stuff that I've gone over in my other videos. One thing to point out is that we're passing this player object as an argument into the move function, okay? So now here's where the fancy stuff happens. This is all the collision stuff. We're starting out with a function and it's called move. And inside of this function, we're going to call whatever we pass to it, O. Okay, this is just a lowercase O. And here we are passing the player into it. So whatever we tell to move, will run through this function and push that object into everywhere where it says O here. So we're gonna move stuff. Basically how this works is before we do any movement of the player for each frame, we're going to take a little snapshot of where the player is right now. And we're going to store those as a local variable inside of this function, LX and LY, that stands for last X position and last Y position. So we're just saving those out so that we can use them later. And then we're going to try and move the player. And this is just normal movement code. These if statements are kind of shorthand. So if whatever's in the parentheses, then the stuff that's after it, okay? just a shorter way of writing an if then statement. So if button up, then we take one away from our Y value that we set up here in the player. So this Y would go up to 62, right? And same thing for down, left and right, pretty standard. But here's where the tricky part comes in. If it collides, if the player runs into a certain tile that's set to collide, we wanna move it back to that original position, this local LX and LY. So every frame, if we have one of these buttons down, we're gonna go ahead and move the player over, but if where the player is is on top of a tile that it shouldn't be able to walk through, it's just going to move it back to where it was. And so it really quickly moves it there and then moves it back before it even draws the frame. There are a few other ways probably to do collision, but this is a really nice clean way to do it actually. If it collides, we're going to move it back. Now we're checking that with this collide function. And this is the same thing. We're just passing that same object, which in our case is the player into this collide function. If it is true, then we move the player back. If it's false, we don't do anything. Okay. So let's go look at the collide function. This collide function has a few things that are a little intimidating, but it's really, really simple. Basically, we're making a bunch of local variables here at the start, which just exist inside of this collide function. What we're doing is we're calling one x1, one y1, x2, and y2. And what we're doing here is we're grabbing the coordinates of where our player is based on the bounds of our player, the left, right, up, and down sides of the player, the edges. So this first one is our left edge. This last one is our right edge. This is our top edge and our bottom edge. And what we're doing is we're dividing it by eight because what we're trying to get is not just the position in pixels of the player on our map, but we're actually trying to get the number of tiles. So 
we're trying to get these values down here. So if the player's over here, they're going to be at tile 6 on the X and tile 3 on the Y. So at tile 6, 3, that's right here. So these tiles are at tile 2, 6, 3, 6, 4, 6, and so on. We're just trying to find where the player is on the map. So this grabs our edges and stores them as variables. Now we're going to take those variables and we're going to test and see if any of these edges are touching a tile on the map that has a certain flag. So this map right here has a bunch of different tiles and these little wall tiles here. Those each have a flag, this, this zero flag right here, this first flag. And that for our purposes is going to mean that, hey, the player is going to collide with this. He shouldn't be able to walk through this. So every frame, it's going to check where our player is and if he's touching one of these tiles that has that zero flag. That's what's happening here. mget is get the sprite that is at this coordinate, x1, y1. And fget is get the flag. This is testing if it's flag zero. And if it is flag zero, then a is going to be true. If it's not flag zero, a is going to be false. And same thing for A, B, C, and D. This is testing all of the different corners of our sprite. And we're just checking, okay, is this corner over anything that's going to collide? Yes or no? Is this one over anything that's going to collide? Yes or no? Is this one over anything that's going to collide? Yes or no? How about this one? Yes or no? And if any of these are true, then our player is over something that he shouldn't be over. So that's what we're asking here. If A, B, C, or D are true, that's what this means, then return true, else return false. Return is a command that basically sets this collide. Whenever we test for a collision, it's going to return true or false. So we can return collide as true if any of these A, B, C, or Ds are true. And if they're all false, then we're going to return false. So this is a big way to test if the player is colliding with anything they should be colliding with. If they are, then we set this here and we say, okay, if the player is colliding, if the player is where it shouldn't be, then we're going to move that player back to where he last was. So this all happens within one frame. So this collision, when we say move, which we're calling every frame, anytime we update, we're just going to call move. It's going to say, okay, where is the player now? All right. We're going to remember where the player is and we're going to test what button you're pushing. So if you're pushing right, we're going to go ahead and move the player right. And now let's see if this new place where the player is, one, one pixel to the right, is he colliding with anything? Let's go ahead and test if he's colliding. All right, let's get the edges of the player and we're going to test if any of the corners or edges of the player are touching anything they shouldn't touch right now in the new position. And if everything's good, we're going to return false. But if they are touching anything that they shouldn't be touching, we're going to return true. That means that we are colliding. If we are colliding, move it back to where it was. If we're not colliding, then go ahead and keep this new position that we just told you to. And what ends up happening when we run the game is that we can move wherever we want unless we run into something. And then anytime we run into something, it's checking that new position that would happen if there wasn't something in the way and saying, ooh, we can't move there. So just move back to where you were. And the effect is that we just stop when we touch something. So this is great to combine with gravity or with really anything we want to do. You can have kind of a four-way movement, top-down sort of game. You can use this with a platformer, whatever you want. It just doesn't let the player go through things that he shouldn't go through. And you can make this more complicated with all kinds of different flags and different state machines and all that stuff. But that's basically how it works. Inside of our move function, going ahead and moving it and then checking if that new position is colliding. And if it's not, we leave it alone. If it is, we move it back. I think that's a really nice way to do that. Again, full credit goes to this genius here on the Pico 8 forum, but I hope that helps anyone who might be new to Pico 8 and doesn't know how to decipher all of this code. But that's some basic collision inside of Pico 8.